drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lecture i introduced you to the concept of phase diagrams and we discussed some of the fundamental terminologies which is uh, needed to understand the concepts of phase diagram today i will take the discussion further from there so here what we are going to discuss is uh, phase equilibria so basically uh, what uh, we would like to see is what is the equilibrium state of a system the equilibrium state of any system depends on the free energy of the system okay so the free energy decides what at what equilibrium state will a sub object or a system remain the free energy in itself is a function of the internal energy of the body and the entropy of the system so free energy let's call it g is a function of internal energy and entropy of the system the combination of this gives us the free energy and that free energy determines the equilibrium scenario of the system a system is in equilibrium when the free energy is minimum for that given temperature pressure and composition okay so the equilibrium corresponds to the free energy minima for a combination of temperature pressure and composition right now a certain composition at a certain pressure can change its equilibrium state from one state to another state on changing temperature right so a change in temperature or alternatively a change in any of these three things three parameters change in temperature pressure or composition can lead to increase in free energy of the existing equilibrium state such that a new equilibrium state needs to be attained which has lower energy lower free energy to explain this point or to drive this point home i'll use this example again the example of uh, water and sugar suppose that you have a combination of sugar and water which is at this composition and this temperature okay for this uh, scenario what you ha will have is that you will have a uh, sugar water solution as well as solid sugar but now suppose you heat up the system you increase the temperature you keep on increasing the temperature such that you reach this single phase region what is happening basically now the free energy of the dual phase system is no longer the lowest free energy now the free energy of the single state which is water plus sugar solution is the lowest free energy state thereby the equilibrium system has changed by changing one of the parameters which was temperature here okay alternatively let's imagine like this you are at 20 degree celsius at 60% so over here single phase region you add more sugar make it 80% what is happening is again you are changing the free energy state and the single phase free energy state is no longer the lowest free energy state rather the dual phase region becomes the lowest free energy state okay so by changing any of these parameters you change the equilibrium condition and what will exist will always be driven by what is the minimum free energy state and corresponding to that we will get the equilibrium state right okay now you can imagine that the phase diagram gives you a very interesting and easy tool to predict what will be the phases present under different circumstances or what is the phase which has the minimum free energy at a given condition but suppose that in order to transform from one 
state to another state that is let's say in this uh, conversion from the single phase sugar in water to dual phase sugar in water plus solid sugar if the change needed time to take place if the change had something to do with diffusion which required time then you could not convert the equilibrium phase you could not get the new equilibrium phase immediately it would require a time for the diffusion to take place in order to get the new equilibrium state right but that is not taken into account by just free energy thereby free energy does not take kinetics into account it just takes the energy considerations it does not take how fast the change is going to occur it just assumes that kinetics is not a constraint it assumes that if kinetics were not a constraint then this conversion we would have got, gotten liquid plus solid plus solid immediately but in reality kinetics is always a concern or rather kinetics is a concern in most of the cases so we'll see the concept about kinetics in a later chapter for the time being just know that kinetics is a concern but the phase diagram which is the equilibrium state diagram does not take kinetics into concern as a result of kinetics what can happen if a transformation requires a lot of time but there is not sufficient time available for the transformation then we can end up getting something which is known as metastable phase okay the metastable phase is a phase which is not the most energetically favorable phase but due to absence of time or due to kinetic constraint the metastable phase acts like a stable phase because we are not basically able to get the most stable phase fine now let's uh, understand a little bit more about phase diagram itself phase diagram is alternatively also known as equilibrium diagram as we discussed just now it deals with equilibrium condition it assumes that we are always in equilibrium it does not take into consideration kinetics okay so phase diagram is also known as equilibrium uh, diagram or constitutional diagram now what does equilibrium phase diagram represent it shows the relation between temperature composition quantities of different phases present and in several cases pressure too pressure too but uh, for solids we'll mainly avoid pressure we'll talk about one axis temperature other axis composition and the area will show the quantities of different phases which is present at different temperature and composition okay now as i said other factors like pressure can also be present but it is not very important in the case of solid materials now an alloy made out of two components we saw about water water was a single component the phase diagram was a single component phase diagram for water but alloys are may, can be made of two components or more than two components those alloys which are made of two components are known as binary alloys as the name suggests binary two and the resulting phase diagram of a two component system is known as binary phase diagram okay so our discussion about phase diagrams will be limited to binary phase diagrams three component phase diagrams are known as ternary phase diagrams we will not go into the details about ternary phase diagrams most of the applications in metallurgy and material science can be handled by understanding binary phase diagrams okay so this is the simplest kind of binary phase diagram this is known as a binary isomorphous system what does isomorphous system mean isomorphous system means there is complete solubility of the two components in the liquid and the solid phase okay 
see over here there is complete solubility there is no precipitate formation over here there is complete liquid solubility no precipitate formation in this common region there is the liquid plus the solid so the solubility of the two components is complete both in the liquid and solid state okay and that is what we mean by isomorphous system and binary obviously because there are two different components present now this diagram over here which I have shown is an example of binary isomorphous system let us see what this diagram shows in this diagram we have the x-axis which shows weight percent of nickel to begin with this is a copper nickel phase diagram so this shows weight percent nickel 100 percent nickel over here 100 percent copper over here any intermediate value this is 40 percent copper 60 percent uh, rather 40 percent nickel 60 percent copper okay the y-axis is the temperature axis here we have plotted the temperature in degree Celsius it would have been Kelvin you can plot it in Kelvin you can plot, plot it in uh, degree Fahrenheit it does not matter this area represents the different phases present at different combinations of temperature and composition obviously you can guess at very high temperature there will be liquid pre present if you went to further higher temperature there would be vapors we are not going to that higher temperature over here what we see is complete liquid okay over here what we see is complete solid this is lower temperature and in a intermediate region this region over here we have L plus alpha L is the liquid alpha is the solid that is the solid solution so we have a region of single phase liquid we have a region of single phase solid and we have a region of two phase one liquid phase and one solid phase okay now if you think about it at a zero percent nickel we have hundred percent copper so this temperature is basically the melting point of copper 1084 degree Celsius this temperature where we have 100% nickel is basically the melting point of liquid uh, melting point of nickel okay so we see that at the ends we have a single melting point because it is a pure metal right but at any intermediate temperature rather any intermediate composition let's take this composition what you see is that there is complete solid till here from here solid starts to melt but it does not melt at a single temperature it melts over a range of temperature this is the range of temperature over which melting takes place thereby this whole region has both liquid and so solid present beyond that we have 100% liquid present okay so the distinguishing factor between alloy and pure metal is that the alloy may have a range of rather mostly it has a range across range of temperature across which melting will take place fine now let us see a few definitions this line the line which separates the two phase region from the single phase solid is known as solidus line this lower line is the solidus line the line which separates the two phase region from the liquid phase is known as the liquidus line so this line is the liquidus line okay and as i already discussed the 100 percent regions are the pure components re component regions this gives you an idea about binary isomorphous phase diagram it looks like this now let us see how to read a phase diagram or what are the informations that we can extract from a phase diagram using the same binary isomorphous system let us understand that 
to begin with the first thing that a phase diagram tells us is what are the phases present we can identify what are the phases present in the system so here again what are the phases present in this region we have here a solid solution alpha phase so we have a single alpha phase in this region as I already mentioned we have a liquid phase okay and the intermediate region here has a two phase regime it is it has two phases coexisting the liquid phase and the solid solution alpha phase so the first thing that I, a binary isomorphous system or a phase diagram in general tells us are the different phases that are present okay now you may ask me that uh, okay fine I get the phases that are present but how do we identify what is the composition of the phases present in addition to that how do we say in the two phase region what is the percentage of each phase present is it like both the phases are equally present or is there some other way that we need to learn that is exactly the other things that phase diagram tells us let's see that here we will understand the phase composition phase composition what does this means this means that what is the exact composition of the phase that we are talking about to make our understanding simpler let us begin by identifying the composition that we are talking about we take a alloy system which has 30 percent nickel 70 percent copper this is our discussion regime okay so this line represents our alloy as we go above that as we increase the temperature initially we are at the single solid solution alpha region here it starts to melt reaches the two phase region here it completely melts, melts reaches the one phase liquid region okay so when we are over here when we are at the single phase region any position let's take at this temperature let me take a different color let's imagine we are at this location okay so at this location since it is a single phase therefore whatever is the composition of the alloy will be the composition of that phase right so this alpha here this alpha will also be 30 percent nickel and 70 percent copper because this is single phase there is no way to segregate the composition all the nickel and all the copper needs to go into alpha fine let's go to the other extreme where also we have a single phase that is a liquid region let's say we are at this place now again we are at the single phase region single phase means all the nickel and all the copper will have to be in that component that phase itself right therefore again this liquid is also 30 percent nickel and 70 percent copper so what is the take home from this the take home is that in the single phase region whatever is the composition of the alloy will be the composition of the phase that is not the case in the case in the two phase region in the two phase region we can have segregation of alloying elements alloying elements can redistribute themselves okay they can redistribute themselves let us take this temperature okay so here what we have is we have liquid and alpha liquid and solid phases 
but they will not have the same composition as the parent alloy they will not have this composition how do we identify the composition of the independent phases in order to do that what you will have to do is you need to draw a isothermal line you need to draw a isothermal line which passes through that point which where you are trying to identify the phase composition okay so the isothermal line will be something like this in real scenario you need to use a scale uh, and draw this perfectly isothermal that is it should be perfectly parallel to the base now this line will cut the liquidus line and the solidus line at two different points that is it will cut over here and it will cut over here fine now the position where the isothermal line cuts the liquidus line that will correspond to the composition of the liquid present and the isothermal line where it will cut the solidus line will give us the composition of the solid present let me show you let's use a completely different color now this is approximately over here and this is approximately over here let's say this is 25 percent and let's say this is 38 percent so the liquid which we have in this dual phase region for this temperature this liquid will be 25 percent nickel and 75 percent copper whereas the solid phase alpha which we'll have will be 38 percent nickel and the rest that is uh, 62 percent copper so this is how you identify the uh, composition of the different phases in the two phase region steps again first you identify the temperature which we are talking about and that already have the composition we are, which we are talking about you draw the isothermal line at that temperature and composition wherever that strikes the liquidus line that will give you the liquid composition corresponding to that composition wherever it strikes the solidus line that will give you the solid composition okay so using this method you identified now that what is the composition of the two phases present as you see what has happened here you initially had a 30 percent nickel alloy right but once it enters the two phase region once it is at this uh, position then the 30 percent nickel the liquid has lost nickel and that lost nickel goes into the solid that is the alpha solid solution so alpha gains nickel liquid loses the nickel relatively speaking fine now what we have done till now is that we have identified the phases that can be present in this step we identified what is the composition of each phase that will be present now can we say what amount of phase will be present what will be the amount of obviously over here if we are at alpha or if we are over here then it will be hundred percent it will be hundred percent liquid here hundred percent alpha here but over here in this example how much liquid do we have we know that the liquid which we have has 25 percent nickel but how much liquid do we have do we have 20 percent liquid do we have 80 percent liquid do we have 50 percent liquid alternatively how much solid do we have that is also possible to be found out from the phase diagram that's next what I will teach you let's see we will be using something known as liver's rule to identify the phase amount present okay I will again use the same 30 percent nickel case we go at this location 
you follow the same steps that you followed to identify the phases uh, composition of the phases you draw the isothermal line we draw the isothermal line and we see where they cut I will take the same values which I took previously 25% and uh, over here 38% okay now this is liquid and this is alpha so I will magnify this region now this is alpha this is liquid this is 25 percent and this is 38 percent this was 30 percent okay now in order to find the amount of each phase present we'll use what is known as Lever's rule now uh, pay attention here in order to find the amount of liquid present what we'll do is we'll take this length the opposite length not the same length we'll take the total length and we'll take the ratio of that so this length is 8 units this length is 13 units so the amount of liquid present will be opposite length by total length into 100 amount of alpha present will be opposite length which is 5 by total length into 100 so percentage of alpha is equal to 5 by 13 into 100 whatever this turns out to be whatever so what we see is that this liver rule is used to determine the amount of phases present whichever phase amount we need to find will take the opposite length of that divided by the total length into 100 we get the percentage of liquid this turns out to be roughly 62% roughly and this turns out to be roughly 38% so here we have identified what is the percentage of liquid present okay previous slide we identified what is the composition of the liquid present so with this what we can say is that for this temperature we have liquid L of composition 25 percent nickel 75 percent copper and how much is the liquid we have 62 percent liquid and we have 38 percent solid solution having a composition 38 percent nickel and 62 percent copper okay so just to recap what we have done we using a phase diagram have identified the phases present in the single phase regions we will have the same composition as the initial alloy and that composition will be for the hundred percent of the amount single since it is single phase but in the dual phase region we can identify the composition of each phase that we have understood in this slide and then in this slide what we did we have identified the percentage of each phase present okay so this gives you a holistic picture about the different information that you can extract from a simple thing like a phase diagram that is what makes phase diagram a very very important tool using the phase diagram you can extract a lot of information a lot of information can be put together okay now with this background we'll see further more phase diagrams and we'll uh, keep on building on this knowledge one final note is for, for a binary isomorphous system 
the properties there are some properties information that can you can extract what is that like 0% to 100% nickel right as you increase alloying solid solution starts to take place as solid solution starts to take place tensile strength of the material starts to increase so if you measure the tensile strength across the composition you will observe something like this increases 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 reaches a peak decreases decreases uh, this uh, is kind of symmetric scenario because obviously here also we have pure metal but in this direction and in this direction both we are alloying thereby solid solution strengthening is taking place thereby tensile strength is increasing alternatively if we see the ductility or percentage elongation percentage elongation 0% nickel 100% nickel then it will show just the opposite behavior elongation decreases decreases reaches a minima then increases so, uh, we can predict this because solid solution leads to strengthening as we had discussed but it compromises with the ductility of the material right so by using a isomorphous diagram phase diagram we can also extract property information with this i will conclude today's lecture next lecture we'll further will build on this knowledge and we'll see an, a different kind of phase diagram till next class have a great day goodbye